it is SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Welcome back. The Durban University of Technology has a relatively new IoT lab. They've opened it up to members of the public and school learners so they can learn about what the Internet of Things does, what VR technology is and how to fly drones. I paid them a visit recently. It mostly started with the whole thing of fourth industrial revolution coming up and whatnot and knowing that South Africa hasn't really caught up with what's going on around the world we wanted to catch up our youth and our youngsters to have that feeling of I know what's going on in the country, I know what's going on in the world, I know what's going on technology wise. From where I came from, right, uh, I've never had that support from teachers and stuff until I met Mr. Osma and he actually like made me have that drive to like teach other people because of the way he interacted with us in class and stuff like that and I really liked from small I've always liked to help people and I found like this was like the best way for me as an individual to help our community and stuff like that and educate our, our kids of the younger generations to be better and to like do better for themselves as well. Tech is taking over and if you you don't want to be left behind in the future we are coding, we are connecting things with wires and uh, we are you know, talking to our and we're making robots and things. We are playing with breadboards and we are connecting different wires and we're playing with buzzers and LEDs and it's very interesting because we learn about different types of coding and I actually got to code today and it's really interesting and I'm sure I'll um, benefit from this in the future. We are learning about um, the Internet of Things which is like a um, this guy over there is teaching us about buzzers and how to program um, stuff on this thing called a breadboard. The head of the DUT IoT lab is Ibrahim Asmo. I had a chat with him recently. Ibrahim Asmo, thank you very much for being a part of our network. Maybe if you can start by telling us about the purpose of your VR and IoT labs. Initially we started to, in order to make our learners prepare for the fourth industrial revolution, we decided to create, disrupt the education system in a, in, in a way by spending, about, if you look around, over 2 million rand worth of equipment which we purchased Raspberry Pis, uh, Arduinos, drones, uh, robots, uh, VR sets, etc. for our students to use. We have a number of projects that we currently run where we use this equipment to train not only our learners within our mainstream program, our diplomas and our degrees, but all, also we need to take IoT to the kids. They are our future. In 2030, more than 60% of all jobs are going to change and we need to reskill our learners. So we started a number of different projects, the first one being the IoT Schools Boot Camp, where we invite a school every week to come and experience IoT with us, where they are required to work hands-on in creating projects and also using our robots, our drones. We actually take them down just to fly the drone, so they know, so they experience it. And the difference it makes to them is huge. As you can see with the kid behind you, what has happened? Okay. Then we also have, that that's not going to be good enough because we need to also train our teachers. So we've created a 10-day program where IoT is being taught to the, to the teachers. So they come in here on a Friday and a Saturday and we go through a 10-day program with them. So they had learned Python, programming Raspberry Pis in Python and also to complete an IoT project. And why do you train schools here as well? Because education is being disrupted. One. Two, the way we teach is changing. The what we teach needs to change as well because we've got to prepare them for basically the fourth industrial revolution which is already here. The main effect of it we'll see by the year 2030 where Gartner has said that more than 60% of all jobs will be non-existent. So there's going to be millions and millions of job losses. But with that said, there's going to be also millions and millions of new jobs created where we have to skill people for these new types of jobs. You heard of the thing that machines are taking over. Yes, they are taking over. But we still need that emotional intelligence which machines do not have. So there'll be uh, learners will require or the job seeker is going to require a complete new skill set. So that's what we are trying to do. Introduce the kids, introduce the teachers, introduce our duty students to 
this new concept of learning, this new concept of how things are going to be done and how technology is going to help them achieve what they are trying to do. Whether it's the disabled, whether it's the sick, whether it's our homes where we are talking about smart homes, where we are talking about smart agriculture, smart cities, resources are being used up. We need to conserve our resources. One of the ways of conserving our resources is using technology. Why water your plant every day? Let the plant tell you when it needs to be watered. Technology can help you accomplish that. Okay? Why put on your swimming pool pump? Or why put on your light every day at 5 o'clock and switch it off at 7 o'clock at night or whatever the case may be? Why are our street lights on the entire night? You don't need that. There's nobody on the road. Okay? Put in sensors, put in IoT equipment. Uh, those lights will only come on if somebody walks past or a vehicle walks past. Saving on resources again. Maybe if you can tell us about the purpose of uh, VR technology, drones and other equipment that you keep here as well. The idea is we need to take this forward. We, this room will be changing within the next few months. This is going to become a VR teaching lab where every learner is going to get a headset and it will be immersive teaching. That means they feel they are in the situation. Huh? So it encourages learning, encourages faster learning. Right? With that comes innovation, okay? where we need to take this also as DUT to the next level. We need to create our own VR content. We need to create uh, subject material that students will be able to access from any, anywhere in the world, whether it's their smartphone or whether it's over their laptop or their desktop, so that teaching becomes fun. As teaching becomes fun, you would find that the degrees and diplomas are not going to be enough in the next few years because the jobs are going to come up and they're going to need immediate uh, personnel to fill that. So it's going to be like a skills to jobs type of thing. You mentioned degrees and diplomas not being enough in the future, but will they be relevant in the future though? Because you get a lot of programs um, that teach some of what you teach without offering degrees. A degree and a diploma gives you a little bit of everything. That's firstly, but as we say, we are changing our syllabus, our way of teaching, our content on a yearly basis to take care of or to administer the new technologies that come in. And how do you identify the schools that participate here? Generally, we've just sent out invites initially and it went by word of mouth. So this, child, this teacher told that teacher, and so they contact me, they make appointments with me, and we give them which days we have available, and then they are then uh, invited to come over. Do you ever worry about the sustainability of the program once they've come here for training and they've left and gone back to their schools? Yes, we do a little, but we also got other backup plans in place. For example, the teacher training. Uh -huh. When the teachers leave here, every teacher is given three IoT Raspberry Pi kits to take back to the schools. Okay? So they can use those kits then to train their learners. And for you personally, why do you do this? Oh, I enjoy it. It's fun to play with all these toys, to see these kids grow. Okay? And we have a kind of a mentorship program that, that, that I'm running currently where I've trained the BTEC students. The BTEC students' job is to train my first year students and their job is to train the school kids that come here. Okay? And the problem is, I know you're going to ask me somewhere along the line, is that this seems to be an urban project at the moment. How do we take it? That's the next step. How do we take it now to semi-rural and deep rural? Okay? So we're just doing a proposal at the moment. We want to create an IoT bus. So we will take the bus now, it's difficult for us to bring those kids to the university because of distance and logistics etc. So we want to take IoT to them. So by creating this bus, we will go on a road show, we will take it to the school, especially for rural and deep rural or semi-rural areas. So that they are exposed. Our innovation, our entrepreneurship needs to come from those guys. There are a lot of issues out there that IoT can solve.